Hi, this is Graham down at Contender Bicycles in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you've watched our channel, you know we've made a bunch of product videos and we've yet to do one that covers Shimano's DI2 system in depth. So this is gonna cover current generation Dura-Ace. There's some things that won't apply to the older 10-speed generations, but, for, but this will cover basically all the current 11-speed generations. Shimano's DI2 electronic group is wired, as I'm sure you already know. It runs on a one either internal or external battery. 99% of the bikes we sell these days have an internal battery. Most of the frame companies are offering frames that are offer internal routing options, so the external battery is just not used much anymore. If you're using an internal battery, you will charge the bike through your A junction. There's a little door hidden on this other side that you can't see that you just pull open and the charger will plug into the A junction. If you're using an external battery, then you just remove the battery from the bike and it fits in a cradle. When you're routing the bike internal or external, there's a B junction that will sit down near your bottom bracket. Uh, the internal one's just smaller so it can fit in the frame better, but there are external options still available for people wanting to put DI2 on their older frames. Shimano's wiring system they call E-Tube, um, and each one of these wires is an independent wire running from component to junction or component to component, um, which means the wires come in in a plethora of lengths from about 200 millimeters to about 1200 millimeters. So you have lots of different length options, which is particularly useful if you're running your frame externally. If it's run internally, then the wire length as long as it's long enough to reach the component, doesn't really matter. You can just stuff the excess wire uh, in the frame. So for the current generations of DI2, there are uh, five A junctions currently available. There are two display junctions that will uh, display which gear you're in and your battery charge visually. Uh, there's an XT display, which we've made a video on, talks about the D-Fly functions of that display. And there's an XTR display, which is a little bit lighter, but doesn't have any of the D-Fly functions. And I'll talk about what D-Fly is in just a minute. There's two under the stem A junctions. There's a three port junction and a five port junction. The five port junction is really used sort of solely on TT bikes. On the three port junction, between the ports on the junction and the ports in the shifter, the five port junction is generally not needed on a standard road bike. The last remaining junction is a new junction that came out with the Dura Ace 9100 DI2 set, and it's the RS10 um, junction. And it will mount either in, a, in the bar end of your handlebar, or some manufacturers are building ports into the frame for those to mount. And those uh, do the same thing as all the other junctions do, but it allows for a cleaner wiring run so you don't end up with a junction and wires under your bar. The shifters come in a hydraulic and a cable actuated option. There are Ultegra and Dura-Ace levers available in hydro now. Previously, the hydraulic option was only available in a non-series lever, which is kind of cool. Shimano offers a variety of satellite shifters that are available for the bike that allow you to place uh, shifters either closer to the stem or some down in the drops for sprinting. Um, so you just have a wide variety of hand placement options that still let you access the shifter. So as you're moving up and down the rear cassette, the front derailleur will actually auto trim so that you never have any cross chaining rub, which is a nice advantage um, because unlike the mechanical stuff, you don't ever have to manage that yourself. It's doing it for you automatically. So the DI2 system also offers three sort of transmission, you could call it, type options. There's a manual option, a semi-synchro option, and a full synchro option. The synchro option is something they've taken from their mountain bike line and moved over into the road bike line. So in manual mode, your shifters work just like you would expect them to, and every decision is up to you. In the semi-synchro mode, when you shift the front derailleur, either from the big ring to the small ring or small ring to the big ring, the rear derailleur will make a compensating shift so that your gearing stays very similar to what, you, what it was so that you can ride without much of a cadence change. And you can, through E2 Project, which I'll mention, I'll talk a little bit about later, you can customize that a little bit too, telling it how many gears you want it to shift in that compensating shift. And then in full synchro mode, you, 
you can run the whole range of your drivetrain with just your rear shifter or just your right shifter. So as you, as you make your way from your easiest gear toward your hardest gear, your front derailleur will make a shift into the big ring, a compensating shift into the rear, and then it'll continue shifting through. I'll talk more about the customization available to the synchro shift um, when I talk about E2 project in just a little bit. DI2 also offers some wireless functionality to be able to pair with a smartphone, tablet, or a AMP Plus enabled device. Shimano calls this D-Fly. The XT display has D-Fly built into it. If you're not running the XT display, you can buy just a small little dongle that gives you uh, that wireless functionality. DI2 also pairs with an application that Shimano provides called E2 Project. The app will run on a smartphone or tablet and you can connect to your bike with the D-Fly unit or you can connect to a PC, the PC application with the charger you use for your internal battery. Through eTube project, you can really uh, discover sort of the flexibility that Shimano offers you in their DI2 line. All of the buttons on the shifters are, and satellite shifters, except for the sprint shifters, are fully customizable. So you can mix and match how you want your bike to shift, which can also be a big advantage for people with disabilities people that have limited uh, hand functionality in one hand can customize buttons to work, to be able to make their bikes work for them, which is a really cool option. We've done a number of bikes like that in this shop to help uh, people with various handicaps. Also in the eTube app, you can customize how the rear derailleur functions, how f quickly it shifts, and how many gears that it'll dump at a time if you just hold one of the shift buttons. And then like I mentioned earlier, with the semi-synchro and the synchro shifting, you can control how many cogs it may jumps in its compensating shift in the semi-synchro mode. For the full synchro mode, you can play with exactly how the bike is mapped so that it, you can customize when it makes changes from the big ring to the small ring or small ring to the big ring and where it does that in the back of the cassette. What we've found over the years is that the Shimano DI2 platform is really stable. There's really no need for the bike to ever need derailleur adjustments because there's no cables to get drag induced in them. So the, no the number of tune-ups that a customer has to get their bike gone through should diminish greatly because there's no change to the shifting that should be happening. If your shifting does go out, it's usually for one of two reasons. And the main reason is that you've bent your rear derailleur hanger. Sometimes when that happens, the rear derailleur will also enter what Shimano calls crash mode, which is a mode that the derailleur automatically goes into where this part of the derailleur, the parallelogram, will separate from the motor to help preserve the motor and not uh, make sure it's not damaged in the crash. To recover from that mode, you just press and hold the button underneath the A junction until that light starts blinking. And then you pedal your bike and the derailleur will shift into the hardest gear and then back into the easiest gear and that will recover from the crash mode. Then you just need to check that your hanger's straight and you really shouldn't even need to adjust the shifting once the hanger is straight. The other reason that your shifting can go out is that people will get confused and think that this is how they'll check for their battery level. Um, and that, if you press this button for a short, for a brief period, a solid red light will come on and that's when you enter into shift mode and people will think that their battery's drained because the light's red and then they'll go on a ride and instead of shifting, they're just changing adjustments on their bike. That's usually the second reason we see DI2 go out of adjustment. So that's a fairly comprehensive overview of Shimano's DI2 system. If you have any questions about Shimano DI2, give us a call at the shop or email info at contenderbicycles.com. Please like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook and Instagram and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.